Hi guys, my name is Anna. I am a 20 year old mechanical engineer student, which means I am an adult student. I have bills to pay, I work full time, and I go to school. So today what I'm gonna be doing is, um, I'm gonna be studying. But the way I study because of my past brain injury is very different from how I used to study. So I used to be able to just kinda go to class, the teacher would give the lecture, and I used to be able to just memorize everything, and it doesn't work that way anymore. So what I'm gonna do, be doing is, um, I, it's like a mock lecture. So basically all the notes that I took, all of my notes from class, I am gonna go ahead, and these are her study notes, these are her in-class notes. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, do the lecture like as if I was the teacher and teach it to just myself technically, but there's no one here. <laughs> and my teacher, what she likes to do, well, what she said she's gonna do is for the first chapter of our calculus class, she is gonna go ahead and give us notes. And then after that, it's up to us to print out the notes. And the notes that she's given us, is based, it's the lecture that she's um, teaching. <laughs> So that's very helpful because I do have, I do write my own notes before the lecture and I have both of those here, but now I actually have her lecture that I can go ahead and teach myself. And what I'll do after I'm done lecturing myself, God, that sounds so weird. Um, I'll go ahead and start the study guide that she has online. We use My Math Lab, so through there she has a whole study um, plan for us that we have to do and it's mandatory, it's a review for the chapter. So what I like to do instead of doing all 52 questions that week, which I don't have time for that, that's like a lot of questions, what I like to do is I'll just do it as, the le as she teaches the lectures, I'll do the homework, um, I'll do the review as in the mock lecture and then I'll do the review as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna use is, here's what I need. Obviously lecture notes are very important and I wanna use, I'm gonna grab a highlighter. Now the highlighter I'm gonna grab is the hot pink one and what I'll do is Where is my hot pink highlighter? There you are, my hot pink highlighter. And what I'll do is, as I go through the lecture and there's something that I don't, I can't remember, I'll go and highlight it with this um, pink color. Like that when I make my final set of notes, that is something that can go onto my final sets of notes. Um, and then I have my whiteboard here that I'm gonna use to write on. And I have three Expo markers. I also have the notes that I took, like that I can do the example problems that are on here as well, and that will just really just help me get everything down. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put my folder over here, get comfortable, drink some water. Today we're going to be learning about the idea of limits. Um, what is the point of this? You might say, what is the point of limits? Okay, why are limits important? Why are limits important? Why are limits important? Okay, so based off the lecture from yesterday, limits can help you find um, this, okay, based on lecture can help you find the area of a curved object and also can help you find, what did she say? Hmm, what did she say? Can help you find the tangent line of a curve. So if you know on a curve, when you have a curve, for example, when you have a curve, like, mm, 
this. Let's say that's our curve, really good curve. Um, limits will help you find the tangent line of that curve, but also it will help you find the secant line of that curve. The difference between tangent and secant is that tangent requires only one point on a curve. So if you're trying to find the tangent of this one point, then you will use the tangent, um, you would have to find the tangent line. However, secant requires you to have two points on the curve that connect together and that will give you, what will that give you? Your secant line, which ultimately is the slope between two points. Now, when you're finding the tangent line, you're also finding the, what, what are you finding? You're only finding the slope of one point. So when you only find the slope of one point, you, we are used to finding the slope of two points, which means we need like an A, a B, and then we need another point, a C and a D to find the slope of um, a line. However, when you're trying to find the slope of just one point, what you're ultimately doing is, this is tricky, you're actually finding the slope of two points because this is a point on the curve, but let's just say you have this point as well on the curve. So as this point gets closer and closer and closer to your one single point, ultimately it's so close that you can't tell the difference between them. Therefore, you can use both of those to find your tangent line. Okay, that's the goal. I don't know where I left my eraser. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, well, erase with our hands, whatever. So, that being said, when you find the average velocity, so the average velocity, what is the average velocity? What would you say the average velocity is? Ultimately, the average velocity is going to be the slope of two points of two pairs of a pair of points right times oh so you're finding the average velocity between a pair of times but how do you do that let me try to find my eraser So I don't know where my razor went. Okay. So let's say that you have this equation. So you're given the function s of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 96 t. And you are then asked to find um, To find the rock between each pair of times. Okay, and they're giving the times t equals 1 and the time t equals 3. So now you have to find the average velocity between those two points. So it's an end here. All right, so you look at this. And you notice, I've noticed I have two points here and I need to find the average slope of each one using the, and that will ultimately give me the average velocity. Also, my teacher let me know that we will not be using calculators on our first test. So every example that I do, I'm trying to just do my work on the side, even if it's multiplication, division, I'll do it on the side here. Um, and I won't have my calculator. So the first thing you need to do is find your s of 1. That means anywhere there's a t, you're going to replace it with a 1. And then you'll do the same for t equals 3. OK. 
Kate, and then I will double check to make sure everything's written correctly. So negative 16, one squared plus 96, one. Negative 16, three squared plus 96 equals three. And what I'll do is we'll find what S of one equals, which means what, um, what does that mean? Which means that at this time, at this time, the rock is this many feet high, right? Okay. So, again, we're not allowed calculators, so I'm doing this without a calculator. side work. So S of 1 equals 80. All right, so we have our first part here. That's not our answer, though. Then let's go ahead and do this one. 3 times 3 is 9. 16 times 9. That's 9 times 6. Let's see, 9 times 5 is 45. 46 plus 9, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. 54. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract these two, and I'm going to write it out. Okay. Now we have our two points. So the way that you could... Do I need to plug you in? Let me plug you into a chart. Now that I have two points, I can find the slope of those two points. In other words, the other way you can write this is this way. There's one point, and then here's your second point. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I don't need that anymore. And now that we have two points, we know how to find a slope because we will do we will take y2, which is 144, minus y1, which is 80, divided by 3 minus 1. Again, we're not allowed to use calculators, so I'm just going to go ahead and write this out. And then, oh wait, that's not our answer. And then um, division as well. Because I can't do this in my head. So then, so then the average velocity of the rock between one and what was the other one? Three is 32 and then we need a way of identifying this so let me just look at this b 
think for a second. So that will be our first answer. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Perfect. Awesome. So let's go ahead and try another one. So it looks like, oh, it looks like we have the same given function. And this time, the time that we're giving is at one second and two seconds. Oh, I shouldn't have erased that part. So we already know that when s equals one, this equals 80. So now you just need to figure out this part. So make sure that when you're looking at the quiz or the test, if this is the same, just keep it out like that you don't have to redo it over and over again. And then we just have to identify this. Double check that it's written correctly. So negative 16, two squared plus one six squared. 16, okay, two times two is four, 16 times four, Ninety-six times two, one ninety-two, and then you're just gonna do one ninety-two minus sixty-four. So plus two equals one twenty-eight. So now I have the two points that I need to find the slope. So your t of one is going to be your x. Oh, I don't know about new markers. Where did they go? I feel like those are my old markers. Cool. Okay, that's fine. So now I'm going to do it in another color though. Now we have the two points we need. And then. And we know how to find slope because of the slope formula that we've, that I know that I've been doing since like, what is it? Middle school, high school? So we'll take the second Y minus the first Y over the second X minus the first X. Now it doesn't matter if, um, it doesn't matter if you switch it up. If you do the first y minus the second y and the first x minus the um, second x, as long as they're they're the same top and bottom, because you can't be doing the y2 minus y1 here, but then doing x1 minus x1 here. So 128 minus 80. And then this just equals one. So then your answer is 48 feet per second. And that is your average velocity. Awesome. All righty. And then in class, I was also shown how to find um, X values using the calculator, but I'm just going to save this tip for another time uh, Just because I know we can't use the calculator on the test So the next thing is estimate the instantaneous velocity of the rock in example 1 at a single point t equals 1 And then it gives me time intervals here So initially, it's the same thing that we've been doing. It's just in a different format compared to what you were doing in example one is t equals one and t equals three. Now the format is they are together. So it looks like this instead of looking like this.
But now we're looking for instantaneous velocity instead of the average velocity. So what's the difference, lady? Okay, so hold on. What is the difference? Okay. So let me try to figure out what the difference is real quick. Because I don't know if she said that. I would have written it down. Okay. So the way they have it here is that they have this curve here. And they're saying if this equals if this is two and this is 128, then this point is two and this point is S of two. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because then this, what this is explaining is the average velocity, right? So it's the position of the time of the rock at two seconds. So in two seconds, the rock has launched up to 128 feet. Okay, so then instantaneous velocity. Slopes of the secant line approach slope of the tangent line. Oh, so then, okay, and you use that plus let's say if there was three here, S of three equals what? S of three equals 144. So this is 144 feet. So in three seconds, the rock has launched up to 144 feet. If we were to form a line like this, this is called the secant line. So it's the secant line because it is the slope between two points. Okay. Um, so then instantaneous velocity is, Instantaneous velocity. How do you find it? What happens if each approach is zero? So what is instantaneous velocity? Let me see if I have it on my notes. Section 2.1. So instantaneous velocity is when the first time we use limits. So average velocity is the total distance traveled divided by the time lapse. So it's the slope between two points. Instantaneous velocity is the speed at a specific instant in time. So it's a slope at one point. Okay, so I need to remember that difference. Where's my highlighter? Highlighter, highlation. Highlation. I'm just gonna use this gel one. So I have to remember this because okay, I'm having a hard time with it. So how do you find this instantaneous velocity? Make a table. So at a specific time. So the specific time would be like, let's say we want to find this right here. So it'll be like what? Or this right here. Or so it'll be like at 2.01 or 2.001 or 2.0001. If we use these smaller numbers, then we can specifically tell the slope between this small point here. Because we've gotten so close to the point where it's no longer a curve, 
but the two points, we can't differentiate the two points anymore, so it's becoming a little more of a tangent. Is that what we're doing? So let me read this again. Find instantaneous velocity. Point T1, make a table. Let's do it. Okay, make a table. Let's do that. Okay. So if I were to make it, okay, so it wants me to use this again, the same formula. Okay, it wants me to use the same formula, but it wants me to focus on the time lapse of one. Okay. So if I were to focus, let's make a table. She just, see there's no table there. So let's make one, just for the heck of it. Okay, and it wants us to look for the point, the time, one. Okay, but it can't be one right or can it i would say it can't all right so the table i would make is finding the slope between one is really stumbling right because it can't be one because it's undefined at one is that what I got hmm. all right so let's do what I think zero one one point zero one this and then this one the time is one or one point zero zero one that's and then the other one's one at 1.0001. Okay, and that's how far we go. But I need it coming from both sides. I would hope so, right? So then on this side, So there's left and right, okay. There's right and left sides. So I mix those up. just use two points or do I have to use more than that? I think I would have to use more than that because if you had like a graph, why? Why? Tell me why. Because if you had like a graph like looking like this, well, all of a sudden, when it, as it approaches one, it becomes so tight together. Right? Okay, hold on. I don't know when I cut off, I'm sorry. So, as I was saying, as x approaches one from both sides, the function s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 96t approaches the value blink because the value is what we're trying to find. God, why is that so difficult? And 
how do we find that value? We find that value by making a table and finding the values in between those values. Okay. Let me highlight that too. Highlation, highlation, highlation. this ends up on my notes the stuff I just wrote and then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight instantaneous velocity section and then okay and then okay this is good stuff this is good stuff so the position of an object moving along those lines given by the function s of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 30 t plus 20. Oh, I think I know why we didn't go over the table, the instantaneous table in class because she showed us a pretty easy way to do it without having to um, make a table. So Okay. So this time I was given intervals instead of just specific times. Okay, we'll do the first one. So since we're given two intervals, the first thing I'm gonna do is break them up into two different types. <laughs> All right, and what are we finding? The average velocity of the object over the following intervals. So break up the two intervals and then go ahead and find S of zero and over here we'll find S of three. So basically we plug in the zero into this equation and that will give us just a 20. I'm not gonna write it down, but this one I will write down. Um, negative 4.9 times three squared plus 30 plus 20. All right, so then we have S of three, goes three times three is nine, so Negative 4.9 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times 4 is 36. Plus 8, 36, 37, 44. And we bring this decimal straight up. So 44.1. Plus 3 times 3 is 90. Plus 20. Let's add all of these together. Get the what's up for this one? So 90, 100, 110, 110 minus 44.1. Right? God, I haven't subtracted actual decimals in a really long time. And we're gonna um, rewrite these as pairs. 
pairs. So we'll do 65.9 minus 20 divided by 3 minus 0. So then we do 3 divided by 45.9, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, And then she has us doing it with an interval with a variable in it. So just remember, treat the variable like a number. So don't freak out, just treat it like a number. Okay. So again, this is the interval. We'll go ahead and separate those two. And we already know that f of zero equals 20. And then We'll do f of h. Let's do it. Let's write it down. Negative 4.9 h squared plus 30 h plus 20. Okay, treat it like a normal regular function. We can't do much with that. So now we have our points. We have. 0 of 20, and our second point is age and this whole thing. Okay, and now we can find the slope. You know, you take the y, the first y, the second y, that's what I like to do, minus the second y divided by the first x minus the second, the second x minus the first x, okay. So these two cancel out. So then you're left with negative 4.9 h squared plus 30 h over h. And then we have a common factor of h. So we can take that out, 9 h plus 30 divided by h, so those two cancel out. So then you're left with h plus 30. Right? Right. So this would be your average velocity, but the way she explained instantaneous velocity is that now you're plugging in a number into here so small into here that is making this number so small to the point where you can't even recognize it as you know you can see it and it's just getting closer and closer so this number is getting closer and closer to zero so therefore your instantaneous velocity will be 30. that's why perfect okay cool moving on all right so i and moving on to section 2.2. And I believe this is where we have our first theory. Okay, so let's do it. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and teach myself the lesson and then I'm going to start on the review online and that will be my studying for today. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break because it's been a little over 45 minutes. I'm going to grab a snack and then that's it. That's all. That's all I'm doing, guys. Um, oh, I'm, what I also want to do is take um, 
my notes, her notes, combine them into, start combining them into a stick guide for myself, like that when I chop when I study for chapter two, I can go ahead and have that guide. Instead of having to look through both of these, I have a specific guide. Like, that's all I'm gonna do. I am off work today, so it's nice, and I don't have class, which is even nicer because now I have a planned study um, session going on, and then I can make sure that I have all of this down before my next lecture. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you later and I hope you're studying and I mean, get to it.